So all you need is this PVC for your control arms and you're good. All right, so it's the next day. Um, our goal today is to get the rear suspension, at least the links, all figured out. So we got a, we got tabs to weld on the axle, and then we have the upper link to put on. So, well, the upper link on frame side to put on. So that is our goal today, is to get all that stuff figured out, ran, proper placement, and then we're probably gonna have to go to um, the store, pick up some PVC. That way we can cycle the suspension or at least cycle the links to make sure there's no binding. So I want to get the PVC measured, cut, and all that stuff because that is a lot cheaper than $200 some aluminum links that we're gonna need for this thing. So that's our goal. All right, so luckily I had Jeff burn up some axle tabs and stuff like that. So we gotta get these tabs figured out. I got some marks going on them already to figure out the center point so we can drill because we have to drill them out for these three quarter inch bolts and they're going to sit right there like i said i measured them and i marked them just with a pencil so i'm just going to center punch them and then we're going to show you a trick how to just drill it once so we're going to drill all four tabs that we need on the lowers we're going to drill it once and it all should work out fingers crossed So we got our center punch done. So then we're just gonna grab all the same ones, hopefully. And then we're gonna get Ashley here, fire up the welder, and we're gonna put some tacks on these. And then I'll take them to the drill press and drill it all out at once. That way they all should be the same. Got it all drilled out. It all should be in one spot. So, Mr. Willie, I hear there's something you want to show everybody. You want to show everybody? Okay, come on. Come on. Show them. Say, so look, guys, I got my very own garage couch. That way I could take nappers whenever I want to and I could still hang out in the garage. That's how you know you finally made the big legs. You got a garage couch. It was our porch couch. It was our porch couch, but it is now our garage couch because it's too cool to hang out on the porch. <laughs> now that they're drilled, the other thing to do is welds. So now all we have to do is get these things put together the way we want them. Oh, body tools. Body tools. Or hammer body tool hammer this is just a all-purpose utility tool everybody needs at least six of these snug as a bug now we just got to go over there put it on there figure out where we want to put it so i want to run it up here right but i'm hitting our truss so i'm going to go through and knock that corner off of there so we can bring it up to there. Hopefully. So I'm just gonna cut this little nipple off of that and go from there, see how much more we gotta cut off of it. It's gonna be hot. All right, let's see if we cut. Nope, yep. gotta cut off a little bit more. Right. Before we get those things placed, we gotta make sure they fit with the calipers on. So I'm taking the old calipers off of this guy. Our spare 14 bolt. And off the other 14 bolt. And we're sticking them on. We know that it fits. We have a lot of room. For our primus. For our primus and stips. For our primus. Oh, it's moving a little bit. One rusty caliper coming right up. Got the 
Alfred's on. Now we're just going to make sure everything still fits. And it will. Um, you see what I'm seeing? We're not going to be able to get our bolt in there? Yeah. While the calipers are on? While the calipers are on, I don't think we're going to be able to get our bolts in there. But put it there, right, Ben? Mm-hmm. And then this is angled, so it's going to hit this tube eventually. Because, boom, it's angled towards that tube. So we don't know if we'd have enough room to get it in there. Yep. No matter what. Is to get this off, we gotta take the caliper off. Hey Josh, so what you do now? Alright, so we finished up the rear mounts to mount it, and then we took a measurement off of there, and to get our what 25% separation of tire size for the axle leak mounts. We have to extend these about an inch. So that's what I'm doing right now. We got them marked out, so I'm gonna take the plasma and just cut them. Since something does not make it right. <laughs> not so much that you didn't make it right. <laughs> and the thing is- I, I didn't make I, it wrong. You did, yeah, you did good. It's just, I think I told you like an inch taller too, maybe? Two inches, two inches taller. And, I, and then I cut I proceeded it down. to make it the same. That. Exactly <laughs> what I made. <laughs> we got the lower joints, the tabs welded on, fitted. They haven't fallen off yet, so apparently my tacks are holding. Yep, got those on. He widened the holes for these brackets here because the holes weren't big enough, and then we'll have to do the same with the uppers and yep. stuff, but we're not there yet. Get to cutting, Willy Wonka. And I'm gonna watch. Just gonna watch you work. I'm supervising. <laughs> <laughs> So we got all those brackets all cut out. So now I'm just gonna do a couple tacks on the, the this side and um, then we'll shape it so they're all the same shapes and they're nice and pretty. Then we'll mark it and drill it while they're all still tacked. So that's our next step. So we just got all the tabs all figured out. I center punched it. So we're gonna just take it to the drill press over there. Hopefully we don't have a problem with it. And we're gonna drill it out and then everything should work out. We marked it two inches up because we're about eight inches and we need about 10, maybe 10 and a quarter. So we're gonna do two inches up, marked it. Now we just gotta drill it. Make your tax super super good. Should have just waited for me. Should have waited for Ashley. She would have had it right. Oh. Got it. So we just got back from Home Depot because we had to go get and, and supply. tractor supply because we didn't buy enough bolts for the heim joints. So we got more. And, and we got permanent, permanent control arms. We're just gonna run them just like that, guys. All you really need is just PVC and you can run them. They bend and everything. Sometimes they bend back. So all you need is just PVC for your control arms and you're good. I'm just kidding. Don't, don't beat me up. We got them for setup reasons. So that way we're not wasting money and damaging aluminum or steel because everything is a little bit pricey right now. Willie knows. Right, Will? Yeah. So we just got that first one planted and tacked in. About an inch and a half from center line. So we're gonna go inch and a half from center line and get that same angle, which was what, 15 degrees? Mm hmm So inch and a half from center line, so it has to bump in a little bit. So it's about inch and a half. We got the angler. Good. It looks pretty good. Sure. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Ashley. That was a blind tax. I'm going to try to make sure it. And open it. Touch the truss. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> the frame mounts for the uppers, these came on the frame when we bought them from Georgia or whatever. So I'm like, oh, we can just reuse these and save, you know, $50 or something like that. So I went through, I drilled them out to three quarter inch bolts. I tried to stick the three quarter inch bolt through there. And if you look, if it's nice and square on it, it doesn't go into this hole. Even if I make it really crooked, it doesn't go into this hole. Yeah, so that's, that's a pretty significant problem. And it's not because I drilled it crooked. This one is not on me. It's just like old, the people that um, tried them on before, I don't know if they put a bolt through there to line it up, but they definitely did something wrong and got them all cattywampus. This is a little bit more work than we oh, So <laughs> this is the weld I have to cut. Yeah, so when you order these from, you know, Barnes or Artec or any of those other companies that make these brackets, what you get is, this is a full piece. It's already bent and everything. And then this piece kind of inserts in there. And then you're able to pick wherever you want to put it, depending on if you're running a Johnny joint or a Heim or anything like that. And it's already pre-drilled. So all you have to do is put your Heim in there, run your bolt through, make sure it's straight, tighten it up, and then you just weld it in. But something happened when these guys did it, they didn't have it set up right. but. We're gonna get it fixed now. I saw your glove smoke a little bit. Okay, so we cut these things apart and they just kind of fell apart. The wells just broke right off of them. And while we were doing that, I noticed a lot of porosity in these welds here. So I ground most of it out down to the parent metal. And we're gonna re-weld this and make sure it holds. You wanna know the difference between me and Jeff? Jeff explains stuff really well, like, he used the term yeah, right. parent metal. I'm like, what the heck is that? It's just metal. It's just the one metal. And I don't know which one's the parent, which one's the son or daughter or whatever. <laughs> whatever gender it is. Yeah, exactly. That's the Jeff thing. He's way smarter. So these are the ones that sat in here. And this is the one I tried to cut out and it just didn't work at Bennett. And it's all this form. So we're just going to cut it out of this. We put them in there and there's a big gap on the end of it. So we're just gonna raise it up a little bit and cut it. But that's what we're doing now. So we got the brackets all put together. You can see the proper way to do it is put them in, run the bolt through, tighten the bolt down, and now Ash is gonna come through, run some welds on it, and it'll be all ready, and it'll work just fine. Way better than what they were. Ashley, how long have you been doing this? <laughs> About three weeks. <laughs> you want to come weld my Jeep too? Maybe a total of 10 hours by now. <laughs> she says she only works with Hobart, so you got to go buy a Hobart. <laughs> <laughs> Can't use that red one? Can't use the red ones. All right, Ashley just got done welding those brackets that we had to do some modifications to right there. And now she is in between the frame getting the lower heim set in so that we can take our control arms 
quotes and run them and see if everything clears. And then we get the uppers tacked in. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> All right, so we are cutting our quote unquote control arms here. Permanent control arms. To 33 inches. 33 inches. And they already cut one because they didn't wait for me to get the phone up and running. I'm a failure at this YouTube thing. There we go. There we go. Those are our lowers. Lowers are cut. They will hold all the abuse. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, a saw. Look, look at how nice and crooked that is. That's, that's just all the burrs on it. Yeah, definitely. Yep, use your Jabir tool. <laughs> well, I need a 33 and a quarter. So, we're welding them in. Welding them in. This is the kind of welding I'm good at. <laughs> That's how engineers take things, it's, right? It's exactly it. If it went, how's that thing go? If it, if if it moves and it's not supposed to duct tape, if it... If it's stuck and it's supposed to move, use WD-40. WD-40, yeah. that's how it goes. All right, so we just got the next step done. We got the uppers on the frame in. So I'm gonna turn you guys around, show you that, and then I'll show you guys what we have to do next or talk about what we gotta do next. So look at that, all the triangles. So there's tons of triangulation in this. Um, the uppers are in, you see right there. And then over there it's in, we got four and a half inches or four inches of separation on the frame. We got 10, 10 and a half on the axle for length separation. And it's almost at bump and it's inverted a little bit upwards. So that's kind of how we want it. So that means when we drop it down, it should ride pretty dang level. So everything should be pretty good. But the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna box these things in, so bring a a uh, piece of metal down to there, box it in, and then I'm gonna build a box off of this onto here and tie this in too. So all this will be just a, a huge node of just tie-in strength. So that'll be really, really strong all right there. But we're doing pretty good. I think we're gonna kinda more or less call it for today. I think we're all getting tired, it's time to eat. So yeah, so I'll probably come out tomorrow Finish this all up, do some flexing on it, make sure there's no binding, which I don't see why there would be, but we should be pretty dang good. That's gonna be the rear suspension. But for now, it is time to go eat. So it is the next day. Next day. We had some delicious buffalo chicken pizza last night for dinner. Yep. So today is Sunday, it's just me and Josh today. To and really. Yeah. <laughs> so we had triangulated four link all set up but we just cycled as if we were to be at full droop on one side yep and then we had a little bit of clearance issue yeah so our, our lower control arm was hitting this piece of the frame right here so we just broke the taps the tacks off we're going to slide it in about an inch and then we're going to cycle the suspension again and hopefully we don't have any of that interference like we just had but at that interference, we had it where like the bump was probably a lot higher than what it really is going to be. So I think we would have been fine if we would have kept it, but this way we can keep a real high bump if we want to, or later down the line, we just tuck everything up and get it really, really low. So we're just gonna move this in about an inch and then it should give us some plenty of clearance where it's gonna go into like this, this pickup right here, because it was still hitting down there before it started to arc up. So that is why the PVC is here. Yep. Because if we had the metal, I don't know. Right. Could have possibly have messed up $200 worth of a, a tube. Yeah. PVC is cheap. Right. Yeah, so now we're just cycling the suspension. So we're making sure everything fits. We don't have interference problems like we did the first time we cycled it. And if you look over there, that's our problem. So this was, this was our problem our first time we went around. So this was hitting 
this frame really, really hard. Um, but we moved these tab mounts in about an inch, and you can see it kind of gets up into that curvature a little bit, and we have, I don't know, half an inch of play. Yeah, about half an inch before it hits. And then that's drooped down way, way more than it will be in like real life. Either that's gonna be drooped down more than it's gonna be in real life, or this is tucked up more than it's gonna be in real life. It's probably, this is gonna be tucked up because I think we're gonna have a, a tub there. But everything's okay from here. We're gonna do it on this side, make sure everything works on this side too. And we should be good after that. All right, so we got our mounts relocated. We moved these ones in about a half of an inch or so. And then we moved the top ones forward that way we're still keeping our triangulation right where we want to keep it. And we are showing ample clearance. As you can see, we're clearing at the angle that we have right here and combined between this short side or this high side and that low side, we're demonstrating 22 inches of travel, which potentially we could do more, but it's the perfect amount to run our 16 inch boilovers. But check out that group. <laughs> yep. It's gonna be a drop monster. Jeff, you better watch out. Gotta keep up with Jeff and all <laughs> all the other guys running sixteens now. Alright. Aw. Then the little saying with, that says, wait for me, I got little legs. We'll work for the blue jeep yeah. now. <laughs> the blue jeep over there, I'll be the one with little legs. Sixteen inch coil over yep. me with twelve. Yep. <laughs> Alright guys, we're gonna end it here. So that was our double triangulation, all homemade. I think if you if you don't, I guess we're, we're talking about it honestly, right? Because that's what I want to be about this channel. I want to be honest with you guys, tell you guys how much things cost us. Right now, I think this bar cost me $200 is a, what, 24 inch piece or a 22 inch, I mean, it's 22 foot piece is $200. So we used maybe three and a half foot of it. So what, $50 maybe? So it's, it's like $50 just to build that cross member. The mounts, they came with the frame. They came with the frame so theoretically those are free. Um, like I said, we can build our own, but we had those and we kind of had to modify them to make them our own anyways. But if you didn't get those for free, that's probably another $100. Heim joints, that's where it gets expensive, right? So each heim joint is $50 if not a little bit more, 50 or $60. And we have eight of them. So that's $400 right there. And then PVC was practically free. We're not even gonna count the PVC, but when I order- $8 a tube. Yeah, $8 a tube for that. Um, but when I order them, I'm gonna order aluminum lowers. That way when they get hit on the rocks or bounce back, I'll probably order them off of wide open designs because I like that company. They don't pay me anything to say that, but I think they're one of the best companies out there right now building some pretty sweet products. So I'll order the aluminum links off of wide open designs. And then I will just take the upper links and we have just DOM tubing sitting over there on that wall. I'll cut those length, weld those in, because you don't need aluminum on the top. You don't. Just put steel on the top you're never gonna, the, the steel is never gonna see a rock. And it's gonna save you guys lots of money. So we're gonna do that. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for this video. Hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. And we did a double triangulated four link for, in theory, $900, thousand bucks maybe. But that's it, that's with everything. All right guys, adios.